Who the hell are you? Bad guy. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best unscripted scenes in action movies. The name's Walker, by the way. Was the little car your idea? For this list, we're looking at impromptu moments or lines in action movies that weren't originally part of the script. We won't be including superhero movies as we've already done lists for DC films and the MCU. I am Iron Man. Did you know about these improvised moments? What's your favorite unscripted scene in an action movie? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Landmarks. Independence Day Resurgence. The sequel to 1996's Independence Day didn't exactly impress critics or audiences, but it was still a visual feast that showed it knew how to have some mindless fun. Don't worry, we're control dive. Falling, it's called falling. No, control dive. Jeff Goldblum seemingly had a fun time making the movie as well. During a climactic moment, an alien ship touches down over the Atlantic and begins to destroy everything in its path. With our heroes caught in the middle, they fly through debris and crumbling buildings. Narrowly escaping the falling London Eye on the River Thames, Goldblum's David Levinson quips, They like to get the landmarks. The line was ad-libbed by Goldblum, and it's a clever nod towards the first movie. Time's up. Number 9. Someday I Might. The Mummy. The Mummy is a wonderful adventure filled with thrilling sequences and entertaining characters, even if some of them are despicable. Benny Gabor of the Despicable Variety is a coward who at one point betrays the heroes by helping the undead Imhotep. Prince Imhotep thanks you for your hospitality oh. and for your eyes and for your tongue. Oh. But I'm afraid more is needed. Oh. Even before this happens, Rick knows Benny to be no good, threatening to throw him off the side of a boat. Being the coward he is, Benny tells Rick to think of his children, to which Rick points out that he has none. I think I'll kill you. <laughs> think of my children. You don't have any children. Someday I might. Shut up. Benny's humorous response was ad-libbed by Kevin J. O'Connor. Not only is it funny, but it also fits with how Benny would say or do anything to survive. Goodbye, Benny. <laughs> Number 8. Black Superman. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. I reckon you've only got four shocks in you, boys. Yeah, I think we can take five. Five? Well, all right. <laughs> the Fast and Furious franchise has seen its characters go up against some over-the-top bad guys. Though one with actual superpowers is hard to beat. Hobbs and Shaw sees the two titular unlikely allies team up to take down Idris Elba's cybernetically enhanced Brixton Lore. Lore gives them both a run for their money throughout and even captures them at a certain point. During some electric interrogation, Lore taunts them by calling himself the Black Superman. Because what I realized now that I did not realize then is that when you shot me, you gave me a gift. Look at me. A black Superman. The original line had Lore calling himself the Black James Bond, but as that's the role many fans have been begging Elba to play, he felt more comfortable switching it to DC's hero. It's now one of the movie's most noteworthy lines and was used in the marketing. That's something that really is Black Superman. Number 7. The Striptease. True Lies. James Cameron has given us many fantastic movies over the years. His funniest is 1994's action comedy, True Lies. And one of its best moments wasn't actually supposed to happen. No, dance for me. No, no, no. Dance sexy. In order to appease his lonely wife, spy Harry Tasker stages a mission to give her some adventure. Jimmy Lee Curtis then performs a now famous and completely improvised strip tease for someone she thinks is a mark. Clearly trying something unfamiliar, she falls in the middle of the dance before hastily getting back up. The fall was unscripted and suggested by Cameron, but it fits extremely well with the circumstances, as does Harry's fumbling of the tape recorder.
Number six, big ass forehead, Fast and Furious 6. Dwayne Johnson is one of the most beloved action stars on the planet. Part of what makes him so popular is his ability to drip charisma, even when he isn't planning on it. Why do I smell baby oil? You keep running your pie hole, you're gonna smell nass kicking. Towards the end of the sixth Fast and Furious entry, Johnson's Hobbs shows up for the obligatory family barbecue. Roman, played by Tyrese Gibson, cracks a joke at Hobbs' expense. Not missing a beat, Johnson ad-libbed the next line. Hey, Mia, you better hide your baby oil. I'm just playing. <laughs> you better hide that big-ass forehead. <laughs> I was just joking. Whatever. Uh, Gibson's shock and Ludacris' spit take are genuine reactions to the funny line. It's a small moment, but one that makes us love Johnson just a little bit more. Not bad for a cop. Number five, the arm reload. Mission Impossible Fallout. Where's the needle? Didn't need it. Whether you prefer him as Superman or Geralt, Henry Cavill puts in the work to make his body suitable for larger-than-life characters. For his role as Agent Walker, Cavill improvised one simple movement to call attention to his impressive physique, the arm reload. Fans immediately picked up on and obsessed over the moment as soon as the Fallout trailer debuted. It happens during a grueling bathroom brawl where Cavill's Walker and Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt face a deadly opponent. Even though the movie features the high-caliber, jaw-dropping stunts the series is known for, this one tiny moment has become one of the most famous bits. Can you still make a mask? I need a face to make a mask. Sorry, I was aiming for his chest. Number four, the rest of his life, Die Hard. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to believe that Die Hard was Alan Rickman's big screen debut given the commanding presence of villain Hans Gruber. From the moment he came on screen, Rickman was destined for iconicism. One of his first vile acts is murdering Nakatomi Plaza's head executive. Upon returning to the rest of the hostages, he taunts them with how easy this process should be. And he explains the death of their boss in a humorously macabre way. I wanted this to be professional. Efficient, adult, cooperative, not a lot to ask. Alas, your Mr. Takagi did not see it that way, so he won't be joining us for the rest of his life. Gruber's line about how Mr. Takagi won't be joining them for the rest of his life was ad-libbed by Alan Rickman. Combined with his brusque delivery, it gives the scene levity while remaining chilling. Rickman clearly understood how to play a proper villain. You made a pretty good cowboy yourself, Hans. Oh, yes. Yeah. What was it you said to me before? yippee ki -yay. Number three, I don't care, The Fugitive. Based on the 60s TV series of the same name, this 1993 thriller follows a man framed for his wife's murder. While on the run in search of the real culprit, Richard Kimball must deal with Tommy Lee Jones's ruthless deputy, U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Go get him! During one confrontation, Gerard chases Kimball through a storm drain, leading to a dam. After one last plea of innocence, Kimball is met by some incredibly cold words from Gerard. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! The script originally called for Gerard to say, that isn't my problem. While both lines essentially have the same meaning, Jones's ad-lib makes Gerard come off as a bit more unfeeling. He only cares about doing his job. Oh. What happened? Where'd he go? Y'all get a feeder pan right here off of this dam, right here. What? Yeah. Boom. Holy <laughs> shit. Number two, a Dr. No callback, Casino Royale. Daniel Craig's debut as James Bond proved he could handle both the machismo and sex appeal the character always emitted. If there were ever any doubts of the latter, just look at the scene where Bond strolls out of the water in a tight blue swimsuit. Many fans likely thought this a loving callback to Honey Rider's introduction as the first Bond girl in the first movie, 1962's Dr. No. Who is that? It's 
all right. I'm not supposed to be here either. I take it you're not. But Craig later admitted that this scene was accidental. Bond was meant to swim in before floating away. But Craig stood up because there was a sandbar where they filmed. It may now stand as a reference to the classic first entry, but it came from a happy accident. In that case, we're gonna need some more champagne. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Gun is Mightier Than the Sword – Raiders of the Lost Ark Raiders of the Lost Ark kickstarted a franchise and introduced the world to the now iconic Indiana Jones. <laughs> Harrison Ford's portrayal made Indy one of his most beloved roles. Viewers delight in seeing him nearly escape death throughout the movie, and one instance has become one of the most famous scenes in cinema. After fighting off a group of goons, Indy is challenged by an imposing swordsman, but instead of a long, tense fight, he simply pulls out his gun and shoots him. There actually was supposed to be a fight, but Ford had taken ill and the scene was altered. Though he doesn't say anything in the moment, Ford radiates exhaustion and nonchalance, which makes the scene all the sweeter. Not the man I knew 10 years ago. It's not the years, right? It's the mileage. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.